this car behind me achieved such a remarkable thing 25 years ago that nobody has come close since then. It's the longest standing record in history. I'm Wing Commander Andy Green. I'm a fighter pilot in the Royal Air Force and I was the driver for the Thrust supersonic car, the fastest car in the world, which is now sitting here behind me in Coventry Transport Museum. When the Thrust SSC project launched, Richard Noble was the project director, the world land speed record holder, and he had this amazing vision for a Thrust supersonic car, something that would, for the first time in history, break the sound barrier. I was tremendously privileged to be part of the most extraordinary land speed record team in history. A team that not only put on the biggest increase in record history, 130 miles an hour in the space of a few weeks, also achieved something that most of the world's leading experts said was impossible, which was to exceed the speed of sound at ground level. You know, I'd come from being a jet fighter pilot in the Royal Air Force, so I already had the world's best day job. And then I had the world's best holiday job as well, being part of this amazing team of engineers, scientists, and sheer determination to, to break this extraordinarily world land speed record. 1997 was a huge challenge. Thrust SSC, we knew, had the capability to go supersonic. We had tested it out twice in Jordan, and all we needed now was a little bit of funding to finish a few little adjustments and to ship it and the team out to the desert with the room to go supersonic, which was out in the Black Rock Desert in Nevada. But getting that money in 1997 was extraordinarily difficult and why we could not have done this without Richard Noble. This car did 14 runs over 700 miles an hour. No other car had ever been over 700 before. Did it 14 times, step by step, on the way up to its supersonic runs. And then the 15th of October 1997, we went supersonic, created a sonic boom which not only reverberated down the Black Rock Desert in Nevada, it was a sonic boom that was heard all over the world. This was a global media sensation. It was on the front page of newspapers, it was on TV, absolutely everywhere, across the States, across the UK, around the world. It's incredibly difficult to describe what it is like to drive a car like this. Um, now, from my background, I can say it's a little bit like a high-speed race car crossed with flying a supersonic jet fighter. But if you've never been in a high-performance race car or flown supersonic jet fighter, that's not going to help you. There is a tremendous amount of power. This car behind me weighs 10 tonnes. It was accelerating at almost 2G. It's almost 40 miles an hour per second. It is the most powerful car ever created. And as a race car, accelerating literally from 200, 240, 280, 320, that sort of rate, all the way up to 600 plus miles an hour, where the shock waves would start to form over the top of it, the howling, screaming noise of the airflow over the top of the cockpit, the steering fighting me because the loads on the, the chassis, particularly on the steering, were so high as the shock waves gradually formed and the center of pressure moved back on the car, through 700 miles an hour, then seeing the ground come at me at a rate that was just impossible to describe or to picture. It's flashing past, but I'm working so far ahead of the car, having done this 14 times now, that I'm seeing every single detail of the desert coming at me at 700 plus miles an hour. Through the measured mile in 4.69 seconds was the fastest we did. Throttle back, then everything is in reverse. We're now slowing down at 20 or 30 miles an hour per second. I'm thrown forwards in the straps. Put the parachute out, there's a huge thump as the car slows down even faster. All 15 litres of oil in each engine slam to the front of the tanks, so the low pressure oil captions are going off because the jet engines are slowing down faster than they were ever designed to do in a jet aircraft. Every single thing about this car was pushing the technology. As the car then rolled down to uh, below 200 miles an hour, the engines had had a, uh, 30 seconds to cool down. I would then shut down the engines to, uh, to protect them and let them cool down for the return run. And coasting down through 150 miles an hour with no... It felt like you could get out and walk. We're still doing 150 miles an hour. But compared to 750, it feels like the car is stationary. Last little bit, rolling to a stop, brakes on, stop right next to the, uh, the crew. They've now got to turn a 10-ton car around, put a ton of fuel back in it, repack the parachute, do a whole lot of checks to get it ready to go again. We have to do that twice within one hour. Then we have set the world's first and only supersonic world land speed record. That was the adventure we had on the 15th of October 1997. Thrust SSC excited so many people both in this country and around the world. What if you could now move that into the YouTube generation and actually share it live online with a global audience? Not only to get them excited about the science and technology of a race car, but actually to get them excited about science and technology for its own value. 
because ultimately we need to move forward to a high technology, low carbon, energy efficient world of the future and the people who are going to make that happen are currently 12 years old and are at school. And the young girl who is one day going to invent something remarkable we haven't thought of yet, what is going to spark her interest in science and technology? Something that she will come across while she's at school. That was the principle behind Bloodhound. We've now got the car up to 600 plus miles an hour. We have seen that have a dramatic effect through the education programme and we're now looking to get the car funded to do over 800 miles an hour, push up through 900 and see if we can get towards that magic 1,000 miles an hour which Bloodhound is theoretically capable of. All of that in order to not just showcase great British engineering and technology, but ultimately to inspire a generation about the magic of science and technology, which is their future.